thanks to all of you in the room. Uh, a great turnout. We're really excited to see so many folks here. Um, as, as Angel said, I'm Vic Heward. I'm the Executive Vice President of Strategy for Federated Cooperatives Limited. Um, and, and it's a very exciting day for us and I think for the entire cooperative sector. This uh, day has been a long time coming and you're going to hear a bit more about that uh, in, in a while. Um, really though, where we're at is, is the culmination and a, a launch point that is derived from two years of work uh, that Federated Cooperatives Limited, uh, on behalf of the Co-op Retailing System, funded in cooperation with the Center for the Study of Cooperatives at the University of Saskatchewan. That project is uh, the Cooperatives Innovation Project. And uh, that research project led to a whole series of findings which has brought us to this point in history where we um, are excited to announce the launch of a new organization to take us to the next step. At this point, I'd like to acknowledge the support of the Board of Directors of Federated Cooperatives Limited. Uh, Dustin McDonald is here, the President and Chair of the Board, and, and the entire Board has been extremely supportive of this project in recognizing that we as the cooperative retailing system have an important role to play in, in working to ensure that people understand what the co-op sector is, how cooperatives work, and to support in, in a new way and in an enhanced way, the development of cooperatives in rural and Aboriginal communities across Western Canada. So it, it's an exciting day for us, and I mentioned the board and their support. I would be very remiss, uh, and it would be a career-limiting move if I were not to mention the enormously strong support of our CEO, Scott Banda, in this process. Uh, Scott has been a very visionary leader of this whole thing, and um, I, I personally want to thank him and uh, now invite him up to make a few remarks on behalf of uh, FCL. Scott? Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Vic. Uh, first and foremost, to everyone, all our guests who have joined us, welcome to Federated Cooperatives Limited. As Vic mentioned, it was just over two years ago, uh, in November of 2013, that Federated Cooperatives Limited, on behalf of the co-op retailing system here in Western Canada, committed a million dollars to research in the Cooperative Innovation Project. And that project was led by the Center for the Study of Cooperatives at the University of Saskatchewan in partnership, and this was critical, that other partners came to the table being the Johnson Shoya Ama uh, Graduate School of Public Policy, the International Center for Northern Governance and Development, the Edwards School of Business, and the UK-based Plunkett Foundation. And this project aimed to study the needs of rural and Aboriginal communities in Western Canada, and whether or not the cooperative model could help be a solution to some of the challenges in those communities. Because we all know here in Western Canada that co-ops played a very instrumental role in the development of Western Canada, particularly through grassroots local action that identified needs and gaps in communities and people came together to find solutions to those gaps in their communities. And today we stand here, we know that there are significant gaps in our rural communities and in our Aboriginal communities. Dr. Fulton will speak shortly and will share some of the research findings that came from the Cooperatives Innovation Project, but I can assure you that he will highlight that there are some significant opportunities for cooperatives to help be part of a, the solution. And as a result of that research, a new nonprofit organization called Cooperatives First is being established to inspire and support cooperative development across Western Canada. Cooperatives First will provide and promote local solutions, create a cooperative development network across provincial boundaries, across sectors, and across business divisions. So today, I am very pleased to announce on behalf of FCL and the entire cooperative retailing system that we are making a five-year commitment of five million dollars to create and support the activities of this new uh, nonprofit organization. 
We are very proud to be the first funding partner of this group and positioning this promising organization for the future. So what's this $5 million investment going to be used for? First, we want to generate increased awareness and understanding of the cooperative model as a solution. Second, we want to enhance social and business capacity at the community level. Third, we want to coordinate cooperative development activities more effectively across provincial and community boundaries. And finally, we want to support the startup with human and financial resources to help start new cooperatives. So why are we doing this? First and foremost, we believe in the cooperative model, but we just don't believe in it. We're proof that it actually works. You know, it was just last May we celebrated the 80th anniversary of the cooperative refinery complex in Regina, Saskatchewan. We celebrated a story of the power of people, the power that people can harness when they come together and work together. Eight enterprising farmers stood together and found a solution in the face of high fuel costs in the heart of the Great Depression. Today, we have a multi-billion dollar refinery that remains member owned by its members here in Western Canada. That was bold. Those people inspire us. And it is just an example of our history, an example. But it's not just about history. The co-op model has history. This is about the future and how we can be relevant here and now into the future. We believe Cooperatives First can help rural and Aboriginal communities to create many more examples of communities coming together to address their needs together cooperatively. I too want to give credit to the Board of Directors of FCL for their vision in supporting this endeavor from the start. I also want to thank not only the staff of FCL but also our cooperative retailing system, which is made up of 200 independent retails across Western Canada for their support and being part of our system. And I also want to acknowledge the leadership of our Executive VP of Strategy, Vic Heward, for his role in this project. We know innovative solutions come from communities. We understand that if people at the local level they know their problems, they know the challenges, and they're best positioned to find those solutions and to help uh, address the problems they see. In short, we want to help make those solutions a reality and to help make Western Canada a better place to live. Thank you, and I'll turn it back to Vic. Thank you, Scott. Uh, next up, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Murray Fulton to the podium. Dr. Fulton is, has been a long time uh, supporter of all things co-op, uh, and that might be why he's the chair of cooperative governance at the Center for the Study of Cooperatives uh, at the University of Saskatchewan. He's also a fellow at the Johnson Shyama uh, Graduate School, there you go. Johnson Shyama Graduate School of Public Policy at the University of Saskatchewan and has been a very much a leader in the uh, Co-op Innovations Project to date and will be there for us uh, with Cooperatives First. Murray. Thanks, Vic. Um, it is wonderful to see everyone here this morning. Um, this is um, really a historic, um, as Scott said, this is really a hist an historic event. Um, let me start by congratulating Federated Cooperatives for this extremely important contribution to cooperative development uh, in rural and Aboriginal communities in Western Canada. Cooperatives First is truly a first of its kind in Canada, and I would say, in fact, um, in the entire world. And it is an indication, clearly, of the importance that Federated Cooperatives Limited gives to business and social development in rural and Aboriginal communities throughout Western Canada. As Scott indicated, the creation of Cooperatives First emerged out of research work that the Center for the Study of Cooperatives, along with a number of partners at the university and elsewhere, um, namely the Plunkett Foundation, but research work that the center was contracted to carry out over the last two years. 
And let me just reflect on some of that research and what it means for cooperatives first um, and um, what I think will, will happen down the road. Um, there were some very important aspects to the research, aspects that I think are key indicators of the approach that cooperatives first will take and the work that it will do. Those three, um, I'm going to list three of those aspects. Um, foresight, reliance on evidence, and independence. And let me just take a, a second to talk about each of those. Foresight. The starting point for this particular project, for the Cooperative Innovation Project, was Federated said, um, we will not start any cooperative development, de development activity until the issue has been fully researched. Um, and to me, this, is a, this was a, a very key point. Um, don't jump into something until you've actually figured out what you're going to do, um, and then, as you can see today, um, make a commitment when, um, when, when you figure out what you want to do. Um, number two, reliance on evidence. Um, the research was initiated to answer some very specific questions, and I'll get to those in just a minute. And the decision to proceed with Cooperatives First was based on the answers um, that were received to those questions. Um, and there's a lot of talk these days about you know, evidence-based decision-making. Um, it's actually nice to see an example where that um, actually took place. And then finally, independence. When it, once it had been established that the question, sorry, once it had established the questions that it wanted to um, have addressed, um, FCL left the research design and analysis to the researchers and to an autonomous oversight group. And again, I think this is absolutely critical for cooperatives first. Um, Federated, um, I have no doubt at all, they've made this commitment, um, but they're going to say, cooperatives first, you figure out how you're going to make this happen um, down the road. With this, is ba with this um, as background, let me talk about the questions that FCL posed um, to the researchers and the answers that were found. There were really two main questions. The first one was, is the cooperative model relevant in today's world to meet the needs of rural and Aboriginal communities in Western Canada? And then the second question um, follows from that, if so, what is needed to effectively develop new cooperatives and sustain the existing ones? What our research found um, was um, that the answer to the first question was yes. Um, from the surveys that we undertook and the community visits that we made, and just a little bit of a word on that, um, over the last two years, we have held 26 community meetings in communities across Western Canada. Um, altogether, between community visits and questionnaires and surveys and so forth, we were able to um, hit 649 communities, approximately 37% 30 of the communities in Western Canada. Um, we think we have a better picture of what's going on right now in that um, area than um, frankly, anybody else um, at the current time. Um, and it really was a result of being able to get out there, talk to people on the ground, um, hear from them uh, through surveys and so forth. What we found from this work was that cooperative development is feasible in rural and Aboriginal communities across Western Canada. These communities have unmet needs that cooperatives could address and they have the business and social capacity necessary to build cooperatives, although this capacity does need to be augmented in some instances. What we found that was particularly missing in many cases, however, was the knowledge about cooperatives and particularly how cooperatives, the cooperative model could be used in innovative ways to meet people's needs. People were excited by the cooperative model, but usually over only after it was explained to them. And, you know, I think I've been sort of in this research game now for quite a while, and I knew that this knowledge of co-ops was, was slipping um, in rural areas. If we had done this study 50 years ago, um, we wouldn't have found that. Um, there would have been a clear knowledge of what um, co-ops were. Um, that's no longer the case. But what's interesting is that when you then started to explain what the model was and what it could do, people did get excited. Um, and um, at, 
the end of, of a number of the meetings, we had people standing up and saying, okay, so what can we do? How can we start a co-op? Um, and uh, um, that, I think, is um, uh, really um, is what Cooperatives First is going to build on, is that kind of um, excitement that can be generated um, throughout these communities. For cooperative development to be successful, and this is something else that we found out of the research, what is needed is a way of getting more people talking about cooperatives and the role that they can play in a community. To do this effectively, the, the research recommended that a pan-Western Canada approach should be taken, and that this approach needs to draw on the wealth of experience that already exists in provincial associations and cooperative developers across the region. Cooperatives First has been designed with these two critical features as key components. A Western Canadian approach is needed because of the increasing sense that provincial boundaries are becoming less important and because of the need for economies of scale and scope. At the same time, it is clear that a large and geographically diverse group of people have to be mobilized to inspire people to consider the cooperative model, to explore how cooperatives can solve problems um, in their community, to assist people in creating new cooperatives, and to help new and existing cooperatives to thrive. Let me finish by saying that, based on the research that we did, the new co-ops that form in rural and Aboriginal communities over the next 10 to five to 10 years and beyond that, the next um, 10 to 20 years, will not be the same as those that were formed um, 75 to 100 years ago. Um, the new co-ops will be in areas like housing or transportation or seniors and youth services, to name just a few. We will see cooperatives of First Nations and tribal councils and RMs. Some of the co-ops will involve collaboration between nearby rural and Aboriginal communities, communities that have traditionally um, gone their separate ways. Worker co-ops will be more prevalent. What is key is that both Cooperatives First and the people in rural and Aboriginal communities in Western Canada be open to new ideas about what cooperatives can do, and that the members of new co-ops have the freedom to innovate and try these new ideas. Thank you very much. Vic, back to you. Thank you, Murray. I, I, I don't think it takes long to figure out why the Cooperative Innovation Project was such a success. Murray and his passion for co-ops and his understanding of the sector uh, was critical to the success. So I thank you, Murray, for that. So uh, it's been wonderful to have you all here. Um, I do want to acknowledge in the room that a number of members of the board of cooperatives, for the interim board are here. So uh, for those who want to have some more conversations, please. Monica is here and Dion and myself. Um, Glenn Tully, who's on the board, is off in Mexico enjoying himself. and. Um, and uh, Kevin McLeod, sorry, is, is not with us today, but sends his regards. So it, lots of opportunity afterwards here to chat. Uh, as I said, media who are here, we're available uh, for you. I just, I'll close in thanking everyone for being here, thanking you for all your support, and uh, looking forward to the next few years. Thanks very much.